Now we're looking at the small gain theorem. In the small gain theorem, we consider a system like this, where we have a loop, uh, a feedback. And so suppose that the plant and the uncertainty delta are stable. Okay, so in the last case, we didn't necessarily require the plant to be stable. We required the plant plus the controller to be stable the no in the nominal case. Here, now we actually require the plant to be stable. And so in, in looking at it this way, we actually might have a controller embedded in here that makes the system stable. So we're not ruling out uh, the existence of a controller here, but we're just assuming now that this, whatever this is, it's stable. And we're also assuming, again, that our, our uncertainty is unstable. We have made that assumption before. Then the closed-loop system is well-posed and internally stable if the plant and uncertainty satisfy this condition. That is, the infinity norm of the uncertainty and the infinity norm of the plant are in magnitude are strictly less than 1. Okay, So this is a sufficient condition for small gain, this, uh, or stability. And so the concept of small gain is that our, our uh, in general, we know that this is going to be less than or equal to 1 in general. So that means this is going to have to be strictly less than 1. So small, less than 1, magnitude less than 1. Now this is sufficient conditions in that it's possible that you can have a, a system where the, the infinity norm of delta p, the, the infinity norm of that quantity, is strictly less than 1. And actually, that's actually the condition we need. But this, this it, so we know that the infinity norm satisfies the submultiplicative property. And so uh, the infinity norm of delta p is less than or equal to the infinity norm of delta and the infinity norm of p is product. So um, this is sufficient in that it's possible that there is a stable plant. Um, that does not satisfy this, but that is still stable. And so the issue really is, is that the, the frequency of delta p, uh, I mean, the, if you look at the magnitude over all frequencies, the frequency magnitude of this may be different than in different frequency than where the magnitude of this occurs. And so this may actually be um, conservative, that is, over restrictive. So the class of uncertainties in the small gain theorem now we can have it this way. So if delta is some stable rational, so this that's what this is the Q stands for rational functions. Q uh, so a P by M matrix, M by P matrix rather, where the infinity norm is less than one over gamma instead of one. So we can, we can redefine our set of uncertainties this way. And any stable transfer function of appropriate dimension can be scaled to fit within this set. All right, so for some uncertainties, the set is not quite so broad. In fact, we might actually have some restrictions on our uncertainty. For example, the uncertainty may occur only in a specific frequency band. Okay, so it could be a band or it could be you know, high, uh, high frequency uncertainty. So this is, this is common because uh, what happens is, what often happens is in systems, the system itself is roughly a low pass filter. Okay, roughly a low pass filter. So it does what it does and then it eventually rolls off. And after a certain point, the magnitude of the transfer function is so small compared to what happens up here that it's difficult to know really what's going on in those high frequency places. Where, whereas uh, in, the, in the regular part of the Bode plot, uh, the, the, the low frequency part, um, you're able to, we can actually get accurate measurements of the system because we can apply a sinusoid at a given frequency, check the magnitude and so forth. So for the low frequencies, generally we can, we can have a pretty good estimate. But for high frequencies where the, where the magnitude is low, we're going to have small. Uh, I mean, we're going to have small magnitude, which means it's it may be very difficult to measure that. Okay, to actually measure what's going on there, and so we have the the difficulty of measurement, or resolution issues can can contribute to uncertainty.
So that's where high frequencies will come into play. So that is a certain restriction on the kind of uncertainties we might look at. Also, the uncertainty matrix may have structure. For example, it may not be a full matrix. It may be, for example, a diagonal matrix. We saw this kind of thing uh, in uh, the matrix perturbations at the very beginning of this class um, in looking at the delta, where the delta can have a specific structure. That is, it could have uh, a delta 1, delta 1, and delta 2, okay, or it could have other forms, okay, so it may have structure. And so if you remember in that case, when we looked at the, the um, norm of the system associated with that structure, we had something called the structured singular value. And so that included the structure of the uncertainty. Also, the uncertainty could be either static, which means it's a constant value, or dynamic, or nonlinear. Okay, so those are some of the things that could happen that would make uh, the, this whole problem. Uh, we, we actually could get different results depending on whether or not we could incorporate some of this information into our uncertainty. So for now, I'm going to change the uncertainty set from magnitude less than 1 to magnitude less than 1 over gamma for some positive value of gamma. And so the small gain theorem basically says, suppose that P is stable, gamma is positive definite. Then the closed loop system is well posed and internally stable for all admissible disturb, uh, uncertainties if and only if the magnitude of the infinity norm is strictly less than gamma. So the infinity norm of the, of the system being less than gamma, the uncertainty is less, less than or equal to 1 over gamma, and so the product of these two is going to be strictly less than 1. So it's basically what we had before, but now it, it, it's, uh, we, we don't necessarily have to have the infinity norm of the system being strictly less than a specific number, like 1. We could actually have it less than some other number. Okay, so that allows us to kind of trade off some things. So the proof of that is given in the proofs lecture. So by way of note, the small gain theorem provides a description of stability in a kind of worst case setting. So uh, you can actually do better than this, but that's, that is a worst case setting. So suppose we have a stable plant. This is an example, and I'm not going to look too closely at this. This is actually going to be looked at more closely in the practice problems. But suppose we have a, a function like this that has the infinity norm greater than or equal to 1. It's like really, really small um, compared to 1. Then we can find a, um, an uncertainty with magnitude equal to 1 such that uh, infinity norm equal to 1 such that the system is not stable. Okay, and so and even though this is just barely so zero dB is is basically one, and so if you actually compute it at this frequency, let's see one two three four at frequency j five, if you were to evaluate this function, you would find it's just slightly greater than one, and that that slight greater than one means if I picked a, an uncertainty that has magnitude equal to one at that frequency and the correct phase, then our closed, our closed loop system will be stable. So those are some things to uh, that, that we can look at. And so this is the um, this is just an example of uh, an example where the, the uh, closed loop stability fails because of the fact that our the product of P and gamma, um, P and delta, has infinity norm greater than 1. Okay, so now we're going to look next at the frequency domain perspective of uh, all of this. We've kind of looked at some of these things in the frequency domain. We're going to look at it a little more in detail.